Hello and welcome to another Overlord Lore video and today we are going to continue where we left off a few months ago when I described the economic crisis that followed Ein Sulgon's takeover of the city of Irantel. But before we're going to do so let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel as well as all users of the YouTube thanks function for making one-time donations. Also please check out my fantasy channel for more non-overlord related content and ideas. Now with that said we have left off at the brink of absolute catastrophe. The economy was deprived of basically everything except food. And everyone who had the money to leave the city did so. Meaning that institutions such as the Adventurer Guild or the Caster Guild were only held by a skeleton crew. Many shops had to close forever because either the owner had left or because no new raw materials could be brought into the city. Because after the hostile takeover, traders avoided entering the Sorcerer Kingdom at all cost. The only thing that was still functioning were the food supply, which was secured from the surrounding land and villages also under the control of Ein's old gone Sorcerer Kingdom. And the first step out of this misery was to relocate the people from the pauper district because otherwise it would have grown dramatically during the crisis. And the people in there were not simply kicked out, but they had been given the land of the villages the slain theocracy Sunlight Scripture had destroyed in the first novel, as well as some undead troops to help them rebuild and farm the land. And of course, they were also provided with food and seeds until they could reap the first harvest. And I should probably also remind anyone that at least in the novels, the takeover of Irantel happened at the end of winter, a month after the Battle of the Cuts Plain, so it was an opportune moment that Einzelgon has selected here. And the free real estate left behind was turned into homes of another kind, for demi-humans and heteromorphs had very very different body types than normal human beings, meaning that they would need very very different type of housings which now has been built. Next in line, Einzelgon has fixed the collapsing outside trade by turning the empire of Barut into a vessel state. Thus the source of the kingdom had now access to markets, merchants and the relatively advanced banking system of the nation, as well as to the coast and the far-reaching trade routes of the empire, which by the way reached all the way into the Minotaur kingdom, where fans and fridges had been produced. Which by the way also hints that the Minotaur Kingdom had a fairly advanced economy, given the fact that household appliances are being not only produced, but also exported to other nations halfway world away. And of course, thanks to Einzulgon beating Gojin, he could also recruit many aspiring and experienced adventurers to his own adventurer guild, which then would be more of an explorer guild than just a guild of anti-monster mercenaries. After Einzelgorn's friendly visit to the Dwarf Kingdom and his less friendly visit to the Dragon Lair and the Quagoa, Einzelgorn not only acquired himself a dragon-based airline, but also a free trade agreement with the Dwarves. Not only would they now export ores and metals, but they would also rent out skeletal labor, which is much more efficient than dwarf and physical labor, thus the ore production had been increased, while the price of ores had decreased and now both nations had plenty of food and ores, because farm labor is now also done with undead workers, effectively turning every peasant into a supervisor of skeletons. And of course the ample available raw materials combined with more available workers also meant that the magic item production and the manufacturing dramatically increased. Meanwhile, Alberto had restored trade to and from the Kingdom of Rias Ties thanks to the Eight Fingers. And now we come to the spoiler related part, because not only did the dwarven runesmiths produce now a lot of runecraft weapons for the Sorcerer Kingdom, but the sheer amount of runecraft items and weapons that were being made also now required an export market, which is why Shizu Delta urged Nea Baraya, the faceless evangelist, that was briefly mentioned during the declaration of war to show her runecraft bow to everyone around her. And since the runecraft weapons were something even the mighty demon Emperor Yaldabaoth was afraid of, it sold quite well. Especially because all of Nea Baraya's public speeches, and there were quite a lot of them, also led to the presentation of her bow. 
So while the entire Holy Kingdom arc was figuratively and sometimes literally hell for the inhabitants of the Holy Kingdom, it had been a remarkably successful marketing campaign from Ein Solgon's point of view. And since the demi-human settled Abelian Hills also came under the protection of Ein Solgon, the Kingdom of Rias Tiles was now trapped between two allied, or let's be honest, between two regions controlled by the Sorcerer Kingdom. And the acquisition of the Demi-Humans also meant that things like Spider Silk, produced by the Speedens, could now be easily accessed by the Sorcerer Kingdom's wider economy. And lastly, while the destruction of the Kingdom of Rias Tiles had taken a trade partner away from the Sorcerer Kingdom, all of the trade barriers, such as taxes and tariffs, had now also disappeared with the Kingdom, and the entire Sorcerer Kingdom now could reach and supply its entire territory, without having to pass through other nations. Also, no Philip could attack grain transports anymore. And lastly, the Sorcerer Kingdom now has access to two of the three main sweet water oceans, and therefore to the fish, myrrh, and lizardman civilizations within or near them. So there you have it, the economic recovery of the Sorcerer Kingdom. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching, and special thanks to... Dash 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 Arder Daddy Arder Bad Guy Ye Bad Burrito 316 Be There Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devin Downen Ding Dong Duck Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Therachivan, Guy with that Hat, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J Morris, Chromius, Kylar, Lee K Long, Legendarius, Lelouch V Britannia with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Meruvek, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Cune Kerkos P, Shergox is Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Team Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rock at Smasher, T.E. Wang, The Shawkai, The Gito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Xenokai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.